Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is on the stroke of 9am, so we are off and flying. That is the accuracy for which AusCert is renowned. My name's Adam Spencer. I want to welcome you to the 18th AusCert Cyber Security Conference 2019, Australia's original and best cyber security conference. We're going to be packed to the gunnels today. People are going to keep walking in for a little while. So if it is easy for you to move across, shuffle across one seat and leave any vacancies on the aisle, feel free to do that because you don't want people clambering over you for our opening session. It's a thrill to welcome you here, but I want to start today. I'm really excited to welcome to the stage, to welcome us on behalf of the traditional owners of this land, an emerging leader of the Gold Coast. Can we please have a big round of applause for the wonderful Stacey Fogarty. I would like to begin by acknowledging and paying my respects to my elders past, present and emerging. Good morning, my name is Stacey Fogarty and I'm a Mullinjali woman from Badesit, which is about 60 kilometres west of where we are today. I am a traditional custodian of these lands and I'm connected to these lands through my blood, birth and my ancestors. This is my land and my family's land and on behalf of myself and my family, I'd love to welcome you all here this morning. Jingri, Minyago, Jingri Walo, Naniniri Stacey, Jingri Yugambe Jargon. Now, what I just said to you all in the local Yugambe language is welcome, hello, how are you? My name is Stacey and welcome to Yugambe country. It is tradition for Indigenous people to welcome other people into their land and in doing so, pay your respects to the elders on whose land you are standing on. We do a welcome to country because we, over, we have over 400 tribal borders sitting with inside what we call the Australia you see today. Respectfully, we would request permission to travel into another mob's country, permission to travel into another tribe's land, permission to travel into another family's land, and this tradition still continues today with my welcome for you all. If I can explain how this works in a non-Indigenous, non-traditional sense, I'm hosting a party tomorrow night and you're one of the invited guests. The way you would come to my party is you, would open, you wouldn't just come to my door, you wouldn't just, sorry, you wouldn't just knock on my front door and you wouldn't just walk into my house. You would have to wait for me to invite you in. You wouldn't just open my fridge, start eating my food and start drinking my drinks. You wouldn't do that, that would be disrespectful. So a welcome in traditional sense is how we operate today, which is when we go to someone's house, which you guys are in my house right now, you would come and knock on my door. I would answer the door and choose whether or not to let you in. If I didn't want you to come into my house, you would have to turn around and go away. But this morning, I'm going to welcome you all into my home. So now that you have permission to enter my house, open my fridge and start eating my food and drinking my drinks. If we hold that thought of what a welcome to country is, it is me opening my home and my land to you. In an Indigenous sense, an Aboriginal sense, in days gone by, not, by us, we have a similar fashion, but we didn't have a fridge, we didn't have a door and we didn't have a mobile phone or anything like that. So you would go to the edge of your country and try to get the attention of the neighbouring people next door. One way we would get the attention of the neighbouring the neighboring people next door would we would go to the border. The border between my land and the next person's land could have been a river, a stream, a set of trees or just a rock. And we would get to that rock and we would light a big fire. That fire would produce smoke and that smoke was a signal to the custodians, the owners of the land of which you wanted to gain entry to to say, hey, there's some people at the border, I think we should go over and see who it is. So the warriors or some of the men would go over to the border and light the fire and would basically say, hello, what do you want? And you would say, hey, I'd like to fish in your river. We know that the mullet is running now and we would like to come and hunt the mullet to feed our children. Do you give us permission to do this? The warriors would then take the message back to the leader of the tribe and pass those words on. It was up to the elder whether or not to let you in. So in this case, we've said yes. Then the warriors would return to your fire and say, you have permission to gain entry into our land and to fish the river for the mullet, but you must adopt our rules and our laws. And for you to come into and hunt our mullet, you can only bring in two warriors to come and fish. Whatever they carry is what you get to take home to feed your family. Respectfully, we would 100% obey the law. So if there were 10 men waiting at the fire, only two men would gain entry and the other eight would wait. The other two men would go in and fish and hunt until they got enough mullet they could carry and they would all leave together. So when I say I welcome you and I welcome you to the lands of the Yugambeh people, I am welcoming you to my home. I am giving you permission to gain entry into my home, but they are under my rules and you respect those rules. 
So today, I respectfully welcome you all to Yugambe country and to my family's country. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your day. Nanyabu, see you soon. Thank you so much, Stacey, for that wonderful welcome to country. For our international guests in particular, I want you to understand that's more than just a quick chat about the rules about fishing for mullet. In Australia, we are, we're exceptionally proud of the fact that our Indigenous culture stretches back tens of thousands, possibly 60,000 years. So we thank our Indigenous forebears for their custodianship of the land upon which we meet today. For this, as I said, the 18th AusCert Cyber Security Conference. My name's Adam Spencer, really excited to be here with you again this year, uh, this time in human physical form. Some of you will remember last year I appeared as a robot. Uh, some of you will remember the bit where I didn't quite understand what I was doing and the robot fell off the stage. Very funny stuff. Tough crowd had to move on, but obviously some of you weren't. Some of you are here for the very first time. Quick show of hands if this is your first Ozzo conference. Give our newbies a big round of applause. Great to have you here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Really excited to have you. If you're up the back of the room, please come and find seats. Plenty of seats down this end of the room in particular. A couple of little bits of housekeeping I has to race through before introducing our first speaker. In the unlikely event of an emergency, remain calm. Follow the instructions of the well-trained staff. A public address announcement will happen in conjunction with the evacuation tone. Whoop, whoop. Beep, beep. The primary evacuation assembly area is in Acacia Avenue near the southern side of the hotel. Bathrooms, exit the room, turn left and left again, halfway down the gallery side. Phones, out of respect for the presenters, please turn your phones to mobile, uh, off or onto silent. Uh, I like to say at events like this, we've got enough breaks during the course of the day, just look up, free yourself from the screens and soak up what's going on here on the stage. I accept in this group, that's a bigger challenge than it is in some. But if you can break away from the screens, the presentations we've got here today are quite amazing. Most of you should have installed the conference app by now. You use that for rating the presentations, check in at each booth during the passport to win prizes and all that sort of stuff. And we're particularly excited that good people at Context are hosting a Pwn to Drone challenge. Now, the objective of this challenge is to allow participants to try their skills in controlled semi-representative industrial control systems which include a fully functioning SCADA network, including controllable traffic lights, smart meters, pump water storage, simulated smoke fire effects. Once players have compromised the network from the IT DMZ propagating through the operational technology network, possible to compromise and capture... I've got no idea what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> as often happens for me at OzCert, most of the individual words in that paragraph make sense to me. They have been placed together in an order that render them gibberish. But I'm told it's a rocking challenge Get along to the S10 context booth, have a chat with them. Make sure you go to the registration desk and collect your shirt and bag. The interactive zone, as always, goes off at OzCert. The Lego booth where you can build your own minifigs and the lock picking village, one of the real highlights of OzCert. Try a hand, pick up a lock picking set and try and bust some of the locks down there. Throughout the next couple of days, our hashtag for social media is OzCert2019. Take photos, get images, quotable quotes, everything that's going on, capture the conversation and get it out there on your social media of choice. We don't care what it is. Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Tinder, we don't care. Get it out there and let everyone know how much fun we are having at OzCert 2019. This event is completely sold out. So can we have a round of applause for the organisers? Congratulations, guys. This is just wonderful. It does mean that tonight's gala dinner is absolutely packed to the gunnels with an extensive waiting list. So if for some reason during the day you realise you can't now make it to the gala dinner, do us a massive favour. Go and tell them at the registration desk that your seat will be empty because there's someone else who desperately wants to sit in that seat. We're moments away from our opening keynote, but now to welcome us on behalf of OzCert and let us know what the next couple of days have in store, please welcome David Stockdale and Mike Home. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much, Adam, and Thanks, thank you man. very much to Stacey as well for the welcome to country. Um, I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the, of the land on which we meet and pay my respect to elders, both past, present and emerging. So my name is David Stockdale. I'm the director of OzCert. It's dangerous to go alone. What do we mean? What are we doing? Well, it is dangerous. It, uh, cyber security is a, it's a phrase that's coming out as a team sport. We need to act together. So what's OzCert doing for you? There's a lot of cyber threats that are emerging. It's, it's evolving very quickly. What does OzCert actually do for you? Well, we're investing. We're investing big time. We're investing in your people, in the processes, and in the technology as well. And what do I mean by that? It's investing in empowering your people through the training that we're going to be offering. 
It's investing to enhance your capability through our defined processes. That's our threat intelligence, and, that, and that's our incident response services. And we're expanding your capacity through, the, through our technology integration with our MIST platforms, with our integration with, our, with vendor products from our services. So that's what we're doing to try to make sure that you're not alone. To hear more about this, I'd like to introduce Mike Holm, the Operations Manager for CERT, to talk a little bit about this. Thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Now, that theme wasn't actually chosen just for its retro gaming coolness. Um, we're, we were actually trying to encourage a, a balanced information security program, um, hence the uh, you know, defense in depth strategy, everything that we've all learned. Um, but it sort of ties in really nicely with um, don't go it alone. So what does that mean for us? It doesn't mean that we're here to replace any government departments or anything like that, government agencies. It doesn't mean we're here to replace any of those vendors out there. It's quite different. We're actually very passionate about delivering world-class cybersecurity services that are unique, and we want to do it at a not-for-profit rate. So that's why we're all here. That's why everyone works in OSCERT. Um, the, we're actually, at, at the moment, we're very excited about planning what we're doing next year. So, you know, you've got to look ahead. Um, so what we really want from you, um, from our members, is we want you to come and visit our booth. So our booth is sort of at the intersection of the, the two aisleways. And throughout the whole conference, the next two days, um, our wonderful membership team, Nick and Megan, will be there. So uh, they've actually got a, a short survey that we would really like you to, um, to complete. It's, it's just asking, you know, what are you using in our services? What do you want from our services going forward? So we'd really love it if you could, if you could participate in that. Um, during the breaks, um, also, our analysts will be at the stand. Um, so if you want to actually talk to any of the analysts, um, just come and find us at morning tea, afternoon tea and lunch. Um, OK, speaking of, of our members, uh, we're actually really proud to say that an, a, quite a number of our members have been able to integrate our services into their business processes. Because that's what this is all about, obviously. It's not just technology anymore. As David said, we've got to think of people, process, technology. So uh, one of the examples of that is the Information Sharing and Analysis Center that we, we've operated now for a little while for the universities. Um, we actually just got uh, a finalist stat status in the Cordit Awards last week for that. Um, we're extremely proud of, of Nick Soyser, one of our um, senior analysts, who's, who heads up that ISAC. But we're really proud of the whole team, because to actually get that recognition for that ISAC was just wonderful. Um, the Victorian government had already put all of, all of our membership services into their business processes for their information security management program. But the next thing they did is they've rolled out our new training across all of their uh, state departments so that everyone can benefit from OSET's expertise. And we were really excited about that too. Um, so I, I suppose it's, it's really good to see that it's, it, it isn't just about the tech anymore, it is about the people, and that's what, where that training came in. All right, so that brings me to something I've been really looking forward to doing, and that is launching a whole lot of new products. So David has already hinted at it, I just hinted at it, we're now doing training again. So um, what we're going to do is over the next month or so, we'll launch that officially, and we'll get all the information out to our members about the courses that we're offering. So there's things like, um, obviously, incident response. That's kind of a cert team's bread and butter. So we're obviously very keen to impart our knowledge on that. But we've also done some courses on planning your incident response. Um, now, that's, that might sound like a, a, a bit of a, an overlap, but it's actually not. You've got to plan these things in advance. So uh, those courses will be announced really, uh, really soon, so over the next month or so. Um, the next thing I wanted to announce is something that we've all been very excited about internally, and we've got a few of you on the pilot for this, and that's our OSERT Daily Intelligence Report. Um, I found before I worked in OSERT where I was surrounded by um, analysts that know everything that's going on all the time in cybersecurity news, I felt like uh, when I worked in a bank, I felt like I was in a bit of a vacuum. I didn't really know what was going on in the world. So it was really refreshing to see all the analysts talking about all these InfoSec news articles. And we sort of looked at that and we went, well, our members probably want to hear that too. So it's now a daily report that you can subscribe to. In a couple of weeks, you'll just be able to switch it on in our member portal. Um, at the moment, if you want to 
enable it immediately. If you can't wait for that, you can just see our membership team and they'll turn it on in your, in your um, email subscriptions. And it's just a daily report of some curated news articles that our analysts thought would be relevant to you. So that was exciting. And uh, the very last thing I want to mention um, I mentioned we're doing an ISAC for the university, so the ISAC is Information Sharing and Analysis Centre. Um, that was something that we stole from the, the US. A lot, of, uh, a lot of good ideas come from there in the cybersecurity space and they're miles ahead of us. So we, we've actually used, uh, we've got it done, uh, done a little bit differently. We're using MISP for the technology behind that. And those of you that have looked at the program, you'll notice that we've actually got the guys from Circle, which is the team that, that um, writes the, the software behind MISP. We've actually got them here at the conference again. There's a couple of them here, did some tutorials in the last couple of days. And there's presentations today and tomorrow from them as well. So we wanted to be able to get that expertise out to you so that you can learn from it. But most importantly, we're actually going to, uh, for all of our members, we're going to launch the MISP service so that you can subscribe to it and you can receive the giant flow of indicators of compromise that, that comes out of a MISP feed. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll announce, um, we, we do have to charge you for that. I, I said that we're not for profit, but um, it obviously there's, a, there's an internal cost to us to producing that information. It's a very highly focused, um, curated, high confidence feed of, of information. And uh, that obviously doesn't come for free. So we'll announce what the pricing is for that over the next month or so. And we're very, very excited about launching these three new products. So, I'm going to stop talking now and hand back to Dr. David. Um, we're going to go a little bit further through the journey of people process technology. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Mike. It's really exciting. I feel very, um, very lucky to be uh, director of OzCert, but I'm, I'm quite fortunate also to have two, a foot in two, in, or two feet in different camps. Uh, OzCert is part of the University of Queensland, but I also have a role within the University of Queensland. So, the, the theme of not going alone, uh, what is OzCert doing for you? Well, we've covered some of that, the, some of that, uh, that stuff today with our proce people, processes, and technology. But it's not just about what, university, what OzCert is doing, but it's also about what the University of Queensland is also going to do. And it's my great pleasure to invite Professor Ryan Coe, the Chair and the Director of UQ Cybersecurity, to the stage to talk about the up-and-coming cybersecurity initiative. Thank you. Um, very good morning to you. Uh, it's an honor to be here amongst all the cybersecurity experts here. I want to find out how many of you are from the industry. Can you raise your hands? And how many are from the government? And how many of you are currently not awake and need some coffee right now? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, I'm very honored to actually be part of this UQ cybersecurity program. The whole goal of this UQ cybersecurity program is that in a few years' time, all of you who, who have raised your hands are going to be part of this UQ cybersecurity network. Why am I saying that? It's because one of the problems is that we always have industry, um, academic research, and education and training in silos or in different parts of the, the ecosystem. And one of the challenges is actually to bring them together. So as you can see from, from this perspective, the University of Queensland has invested in a program which actually brings everyone together. OSCERT and its members, UQ's ITS with its SOC, the industry, government, and international organizations like the Interpol, ISO, NIST, and so on. Together with all the researchers from our different faculties, the engineering, architecture, uh, an IT faculty with the School of ITEE, the science uh, with the math and physics, um, you know, the mathematicians and the physicists uh, who are working on the quantum computing, the post-quantum uh, crypto and so on, the humanities, arts and social science faculty uh, who are working on the different social aspects and the challenges of cybersecurity, and the business, economics and law faculty uh, working on the business governance, uh, the economical decision making, the legal aspects of cybersecurity, medicine coming together to understand from the psychology perspective, even for the health information systems, the data privacy and so on, the Center for Policy Futures covering the national security and the policies, 
and we have the Institute for Social Science Research, which supports the HASS, and also, of course, yeah, coming together. And as Mike alluded to, it's dangerous to go alone, and David as well mentioned that. So we're all coming together, and together with OSCERT, we are actually offering a lot of continuing professional development courses, a master's program, PhDs, and so on. So that's in a nutshell how we are proposing to work together, and it is my dream, at least, to see all of you as part of UQ Cybersecurity. If you come by our booth, you might get a UQ Cybersecurity sticker, right? So I'll see you at the booth then. Thank you very much. Yeah.